Mike, uh, I've just asked Ian if uh, he has any firm ideas about any of the young England players who are around who have looked very promising to him as he's been going around the counties. He told me that, uh, yes, he has, but he's no, no intention at all of uh, saying what they are. I think that's a fair comment from Ian. He doesn't want to give anything away. Um, but looking at, uh, at youngsters, you know, Richie, it's, uh, it's always been a thing in this country that we never have uh, teenagers or young lads of the age of 20, or many of them around, because I think they all look to have a degree or a trade before they come into the game of cricket. Youngsters we have around, we're talking about boys of the age of 25 and, and just over, the, over there. And there are a fair number of around, but I hope that people aren't thinking of just discarding the England players because of what has happened in this test match. I think if it had been played under the, the equal conditions the whole time, then I think uh, that people can be very critical about it. But to bat on a wicket which was completely rain affected, um, it was always on the cards that uh, the Australians were going to be on the better side than we were. Well, Ian made a very good point about that, one with which I entirely agree, when he talked about the covering of the pitches and the fact that he thinks this is unfair when the fast bowlers are allowed to rush in and bowl fast because their footholds are secured and uh, you don't have the good sight of having slow bowlers up against uh, batsmen on a rain-affected pitch. But he, he did make the point he thought this to be unfair. I think it is un unfair. Um, we, we seem to be the only country in the world, as far as I'm aware, that uh, doesn't cover right from the word go. Um, the reasons for this, uh, I'm not quite certain. But it's very easy for me on the losing side here to be critical about something that's happened here. Uh, I suppose if I had made a different decision at the, uh, the beginning of the match, uh, the Australians might have been on, on the other end of the, of the stick. But there we are, we, come, we came on at the end where the ball was flying around and it moved considerably with, with the quick bowlers. I think we'll probably go back in, in the future, as I would like to see it, and have covered wickets the whole time in this country. Just going back to this morning's play, Max Walker came here as very much the third bowler in this uh, spearhead of the uh, Australian lineup. Lily and Thompson, the two who get all the publicity, but I thought Walker really did bowl superbly this morning. Well, he always seems to come in as, as the third one and not quite get the publicity that the other two get. But I've always rated Max. I thought he bowled exceedingly well in Australia against us. And I said that when he came over here, I believed he'd be quite a force as well. And uh, he hasn't quite hit top gear, I think, in the previous matches, but he's certainly out there today with a little bit of moisture that fell on, on the top of the wicket. He moved it around tremendously well. And he keeps going as well. He's a very strong boy. And, thrives on bowling. Yes, he does. Mike, I must ask you, what about your own personal position now? Well, I'm off to look after a Gillette Cup Kent side, I hope, and beating Nottinghamshire now, and I shall be thinking about what's happened over the last few days. I'm rather sad that uh, I made a, uh, a mistake in putting the, the Australians in, but it's easy after the event to, uh, to say this. Uh, at the time, I believed it was the right one, but there we are. Um, as regards cricket, well, I'm professional cricketer, I love cricket, and so long as I'm asked to play the game of cricket, I will do it. Unfortunately, Dinesh's decision to send Australia in cost him not only the captaincy, but also his place in the side. He was dropped for the remainder of the series. Selectors handed the captaincy to Tony Gregg, who then led England to three successive draws in the four-match series. Australia therefore retained what should have been the Ashes with a 1-0 series win, but England, because it was just a four-test series after the inaugural World Cup, said no, it can't be for the Ashes. We need five tests to justify an Ashes series, obviously expecting to lose.